We've been to Yellowstone many times over the years, and it's always a life-changing experience. We're taking you on a virtual tour today. We'll start at the north entrance, Roosevelt Arch. The arch itself is a fine example of craftsmanship, but the significance of this monument lies in its message for the benefit and enjoyment of the people. Yellowstone is vast, and there's no way you can see the whole thing in a day. These are our favorites, and we hope that if you have a few days in the park, this will give you some ideas of what to do. As we head south into the park, we make our way to the Mammoth area. There are plenty of historical, man-made features here, as well as plenty of wildlife. There's lodging here as well. We recommend staying in a hot tub cabin if your budget allows for it. The primary focus of this area is the Mammoth Hot Spring itself. This inverted cave changes all the time. We've been to this area almost every time we've visited the park, and it's always noticeably different. One year, an area can be dark and dormant. The next year, it can be a bubbling display of hot, toxic water painted in a vibrant display of thermophiles. As we head south down the west side of the Grand Loop, we come to Norris Geyser Basin. It is the hottest and oldest thermal basin in the park. If you enjoy a more wooded walk, try the back basin. This boardwalk will take you past lots of thermal features as well as to Steamboat Geyser. It's the tallest geyser in the world. It had been many years since its last eruption, but the walk is worth it to see if you can catch one. Even if you don't catch Steamboat Geyser, there are so many other features on this walk to remind you that you are walking on a huge volcano. In contrast, the porcelain basin has no trees, but is a sensory experience in smells, sights, and sounds. Our next stop is Grand Prismatic Hot Spring. The walk across the Firehole River and by the geysers and pools of this destination set the stage for the Grand Prismatic. The steam will cloud your vision. The hot, moist air will penetrate your clothing and warm your entire body. And the smell of burning sulfur will make all other smells on the air dissipate into nothingness. The ground level view of red, orange, yellow, green, and blue colors painted on the ground will only be eclipsed by the view from above, the observation platform nearby, a short hike up Fairy Falls Trail. If you continue on the trail, you will get to Fairy Falls. Beyond that is one of our favorite destinations in the park. Imperial Geyser. There's nothing that extraordinary about the Imperial Geyser, except for we visited it on one of our first trips, and it's away from the crowds. On to one of the most popular areas in the park, the Old Faithful area. Our advice here is to arrive early or stay in the area. 
I was the only one around on my way to breakfast to watch Old Faithful erupt this time. We love this area of the park. And even though it's crowded, we've visited it each time we've been to Yellowstone. One of our favorite times was our morning walk, past our favorite features and out to Morning Glory Pool. Do you wanna watch Old Faithful from a unique place without the crowds? Head up to Observation Point, then on to Solitary Geyser. No matter where we are, sunset is always a special time. The Old Faithful Inn is a must stop when you visit this area. This quintessential example of park architecture combines the dark warmth of a cabin and a crackling log fire with the dizzying heights of a stone cathedral. You'll want to linger here for a while with a good book, a great friend, and a game of checkers. With advanced reservations, you can help park staff lower the flag at dusk. There's nothing quite like watching Old Faithful erupt from the top of Old Faithful Inn while folding the flag of the United States of America. This experience reinterprets Roosevelt's statement for the benefit and enjoyment of the people and was, without a doubt, life-changing. From the Old Faithful area, we head across the south side of the Grand Loop to the West Thumb Geyser Basin. The West Thumb Geyser Basin is in the south part of the park. If you drive in from Jackson, this will likely be one of the first thermal areas you see. When we first visited the area, it snowed. Always be prepared for snow at any time of year in Yellowstone. As we head north, our next two spots are favorites for different reasons. Elephant Back Mountain, as well as the Mud Volcano area. We've only been on the Elephant Back Trail one visit due to bear activity on the others, but the views from the lookout at the end of this out and back wooded trail are wonderful. Mud Volcano is a huge mud pot. That's what most of this area is made up of. However, Dragon's Mouth Spring is a spring and a geyser. These are just two of the features that make this roadside area one of the favorites. The next stop on our journey is the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and two magnificent waterfalls. One of the reasons we love Yellowstone is that it offers so much. Any one of the features you've seen in this virtual tour would be worthy of a national park in its own right. With just a little bit of walking, you can visit the brink of the lower and upper falls. The energy you will exert to make these trips pales in comparison to the raw power of gravity-driven water that will vibrate your entire body like the E-string on a double bass. Heading north, you get to another great waterfall that inspired the establishment of Yellowstone National Park back in the 1800s, Tower Fall.
After Tower Fall, we leave the Grand Loop and head east for some wildlife viewing in Lamar Valley and Trout Lake. Lamar Valley is known as America's Serengeti. Please remember to maintain your distance and use your zoom lens when watching the wildlife. Our best tip is to be patient and get to Lamar Valley early. We have left Mammoth Hot Springs before dawn to catch some of these photos. In Lamar Valley, stop at Soda Butte. Walk around the back to see the American cliff swallows that are nesting there. It was amazing to see all of them in this little community. We were introduced to Trout Lake on our guided hike in 2010. This is when I found a love for otters. The lake is beautiful and to watch these otters sliding just beneath the surface is amazing to me. Otters aren't the only animals that inhabit Trout Lake. We've seen a muskrat there more than once. Yellowstone National Park truly is a wonderland. Whatever adventures you find in the park, we hope that this has given you a few ideas of places to go and what you'll see when you arrive. We truly do love Yellowstone National Park and can't wait until the next time we get to come back. There are just some places in this world that hold a piece of your heart. Yellowstone is one of those for us and it won't let go and we don't want it to.